Inside La Catedral, Pablo Escobar's self-designed prison. In the early 1990s, Pablo Escobar, then the most dangerous drug lord in the world, consented to serve a five-year sentence in his very own luxury jail, which he had planned himself and outfitted with amenities like jacuzzis, football beaches, helipads, and his very own personal army. Pablo Escobar, a drug lord from Colombia, was the world's wealthiest and most renowned criminal in 1991. He was also the most dangerous of all the criminals in the world at the time. Throughout the decade of the 1980s, Pablo Escobar and his ruthless assassins, known as Sicarios, conducted a war against the government of Colombia and its citizens in order to protect themselves from the possibility of being extradited to the United States for the crimes they had committed. Over 5,000 individuals lost their lives as a direct result of Escobar's actions during the violent war that he instigated. Escobar's hitmen attacked innocent citizens alongside high-ranking government officials and law enforcement officers. Because of the extent of El Patron's influence, when he chose to eventually hand himself in to authorities in 1991, he was able to do so on his own terms inside a custom-built jail that was every bit as lavish as one would anticipate from a guy who earned more than $1 million in a single day. Escobar pledged to spend five years in jail that he would construct himself and name La Catedral. This was one of the conditions of his surrender, which was referred to as turning himself in. While he was incarcerated there, Escobar had the ability to choose the guards who were responsible for protecting the facility, as well as the other inmates who would be held with him. Additionally, Colombian authorities were not permitted to get within three miles of the complex. The drug boss selected a location high on the hills overlooking Medellin, and in June of 1991, he moved there with his own personal army at his disposal. The positioning of his dungeon was purposeful. It was chosen because it had a commanding view of the surrounding region, and was thus well suited to withstand an assault by hostile soldiers. He also set up his jail cell in such a way that via the use of a massive telescope, he was able to keep an eye on the home that his daughter had built for herself in Medellin. This was an unusually emotional gesture for a man who had been convicted of killing dozens of people. There is no need to state the obvious, but Pablo's time spent behind bars was everything but difficult. The drug kingpin outfitted his mansion with a variety of high-end amenities, such as helipads, football fields, jacuzzis, fully equipped bars, and even a big waterfall. Pablo and his mercenaries enjoyed the good life for a whole year as his huge drug enterprise continued to thrive unhindered thanks to Pablo's ability to pull the strings from inside the organization. The group would sneak prostitutes and costly food into the complex on a daily basis so that they could indulge in sexual encounters and binge on their bounty. It wasn't even close to being the jail if that gives you any idea, but unfortunately, all wonderful things must eventually come to an end. The patience of the Colombian government was put to the test when Pablo Escobar brutally tortured and murdered four of his associates while they were inside the site. Although the government was willing to turn a blind eye to Escobar running his drug empire from sight, their patience was tested when Escobar carried out these acts. In July of 1992, the Colombian army encircled the facility and asked that Pablo Escobar surrender and turn himself in so that he could be transferred to a traditional jail. In response, Pablo did nothing more than stroll out the back door, and the officials, who were all scared of Pablo because of his notoriety, let him go without a fight. After being on the run for a whole year, Pablo's homicidal life was finally put to an end in December 1993 in the city of Medellin when he was shot in the head with a pistol while standing on a rooftop. His dungeon would one day be taken over by monks, who would turn it into a place of prayer, removing all traces of the smell left by El Patron's empire in the process.